and welcome to Model Kit Stuff uh, and this is a first impressions video of uh, Trumpeter's 1350 scale Veribus Unitis. Is that is that right? Is that how you pronounce that? I'm not sure. Well for the sakes of my sanity and for not offending um, the Austrians uh, we'll refer to um, this as the ship <laughs> through the rest of this review. Okay First things first, the box, and I'm going to apologise for the state of it. It got hammered in the post. Um, I bought this as a little bit of an experiment from China, um, and yeah, it's an utter mess. Uh, fortunately, I don't think there's anything damaged inside, um, So, but we will have a look in a minute. So, we get some very nice um, artwork on the front, um, depicting the... Um, ship in all its beauty uh, steaming at sea with what looks like a sister ship um, then on the side there we get the, the same box art um, and it's the same on the other side and then we have an overhead view um, clearly taken from an air balloon because we didn't have helicopters um, and then there's a little bit of potted history um, and then we have Side and front view, a um, little picture showing you that you get some photo etch and um, again the abysmal attempt at decals. As, um, it says it's for 14 and over and um, that's because of the photo etch of course um, and it's made in China um, and then we've got a kit number there of 05364. Right then. Oh, looks very nice. Let's have a look what's in the box. So as you can see, other than um, actually opening the box lid to check there was no damage, um, I've not opened these bags, so we've not looked at this um, really at all. Um, you get the standard trumpeter flyer, um, which is promoting its J20 100% new tool jet aircraft. Um, and some other bits and pieces, tank, tank transporter, and this very same kit, just in case you weren't sure you wanted to buy what you bought, and something else there at the bottom, um, a hovercraft. Okay, interesting. So that's the flyer. Then we have um, standard looking instructions and uh, a paint sheet that, that even without looking, we know we'll probably be wrong just because it's trumpeter. Right, let me unbag this lot and we'll go through them one at a time. Okay, so sprue A is the two um, hull halves. So the first thing I'm noticing is we've got some recessed panel lines on here, which we don't often see. Don't see any sink. Nope, I'm fairly confident we've got no sinks. So that's really nice. Um, and I'm guessing these are the mounting points for anti torpedo nets. And we've got the scuttles. Uh, and then we've got. I'm guessing they're more scuttles, but they, they, they look different. They've got like a, a little square thing around them. Um, that looks like stone gallery doors. I might be wrong, but that's what that looks like to me. We've got um, a little moulded on davit there. Um, I can actually see the release agent around some of these um, scuttles. Oh, I think we have... I think we've got a little bit of sink there. Uh, we've got a moulds on ladder there. Um, and these will be the mounting points for the um, hull side guns. Another moulded on ladder, a couple of moulds on ladders. And then when you have that um, ram style bow, which always looks quite pretty. Um, obviously, we don't have an option here for. Um, water line uh, 
um, quite a few location looks so um, that will either help us or hinder us we will see when we build it um, it's a um, fairly good thick bit of plastic and then we've got some location points there um, for stiffeners so that's all perfect yeah very nice that very nice next out we have the deck um, and I have to say the deck planking looks really nice um, it seems to be a bit finer than um, we usually get so usually the gaps between the um, the deck planking are very deep and thick and it gives the whole deck a sort of out of scale look but we haven't got that on here um, there's quite a few skylights which all appear to be flat those two have a slight camber um, and we've got some positioning points for superstructure and then we've got the barbettes and what looks like uh, steel deck sections here at the bow I'm sorry about the lighting I have a different setup on my desk today because it's Sunday and my kids will be building their models with me um, and I've done everything I can to get the uh, get the light correct but this is as best I can do sorry doesn't help that we've got no sunlight just a load of rain today so yeah that that deck looks really really nice I'm quite impressed with that really good so next out is sprue B and there's four of these in two bags as you can see coming foam wrapped um, and on here we have a slide moulded um, main turret and I have to say the detailing on the turret is absolutely beautiful it is really nice you've got lots and lots of rivet detail on going on on there rows and rows of it um, lots of detail on there that's going to look stunning um, that's one of the finest um, slide printed turrets I've ever seen that is very nice indeed um, then we have um, what look like booms they're very very fine um, but the plastic's quite hard, so um, probably easier to clean up than they look. Um, that looks like uh, gun barrels. Um, those ones don't appear to be rifled. Well, I say rifled, I mean hole in the, in the middle. You wouldn't do the rifling anyway. Um, they look like more booms as well, so they could be flagstaffs, possibly. Um, then we've got some winches. They look like gun shields, davits, um, we've got some deck mounted guns there, we've got the lenses for the um, search lamps and the search lamps and again the surface detail on the, on the search lamps is lovely, it's almost 3D printed look. Then we've got the inside of the, I'm guessing that ship's boat not sure if that's slightly warped or supposed to be um, slightly curved um, then we've got the mounting point for one of the I'm not quite sure what that is but it's got a lot of flash on it an awful lot of flash uh, yeah um, and we've got that looks like part of the anchor some very very tiny parts here vents really tiny vents um, and then main guns they have an, a lovely shape to them a little flare at the end and they do have the, the holes in um, so that looks lovely um, these will be the side guns for the, for the side of the hull let's flip this over and have a look so um, there's no ejector pin mark in the base of the of the boat so that's 
really nice to see so when you put that in that's going to look great um, that looks a little bit heavy the interior of those um, I'm sure the aftermarket people will probably address that so let's have a look some very very fine parts on there and look at the level of, of detail that you're getting in some places the um, deck guns look a little bit light in terms of detail when you compare it to that stunning turret there I don't know if you can see side view of those search lamps um, but there's lots of detail on the side there so really nice actually um, yeah it's, uh, the, the, the level of detail is very very good and it's very crisp so other than that flash there's no issues in, in any of this really so next we have um, Spruce C and you, you can see well there's two of these that came foam wrapped in a bag but the foam wraps these bits these bits stick out and because my box has got battered um, both of mine have damage here I think the part is okay it's just twisted on the sprue um, but yeah we've got a couple of slide molded structures we've got a rudder um, feels a bit featureless that I'm sure there would have been um, zinc strips on it for example um, then we've got Again, this looks like a boom, but there's a appears to be quite a heavy ejector pin mark in the middle of it that's actually distorted the shape. Uh, how much of an issue that is, I don't know. Uh, we've got funnel cap, more little bits for the ship's boats, ship's cranes, lots and lots of tiny rods. So either it had a lot of flags, or maybe these are to do with the um, torpedo netting and they swing in against the side of the ship. So maybe there's a lot of these things to add to the hull, possibly. We will see in a moment, no doubt. The, the hulls of the ship's boats look very nice. Let's just flip her over. So again, no eject pin mark in the, in the inside of the ship's boat, which is always nice to see. There's nothing worse than ejector pin mark there. Um, we have some inner detail there, and I'm guessing that goes on top. Um, so that'll look quite um, an intricate ship's boat when, when built up. Some very small parts again. A little bit of flash on one of these range finders. Right then, uh, sprue D, um, so this is all slide moulded um, and we have superstructure parts so there's some raised detail and a door on that one. Um, we have, this is clearly an armoured position because uh, you can just tell by the style of it. Um, but it has um, ladders on the side and some slit openings. Yeah. A mounting point on the top for something, a mast or something. Uh, this is the funnel base. We can see the two funnel mounting positions. Uh, clearly something goes in the middle there. We've got one ladder and one door on that and then another armoured position range finder or control center or something like that um, I don't know don't think we've got any sync can't see any sync with that all oh, looks good I'm sure we're a bit light on detail on some of these parts but um, 
what they have presented. They presented very, very well. It's fruity. I've got a part that's come off in the bag. Um, it's testament to how well Trumper to pack their kits that nothing's actually damaged. Um, so we've got a small superstructure part here which has um, a door on it. Um, and I can't quite make out what that is, but this it has a very rough texture on this side, and then there's some smooth rectangle. You see that in the light. So, yeah, that looks okay. Um, then we've got looks like a gun mounting. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, motorized ship's boat. These are the stiffeners for the hull, the funnels, which have got some nice textured detail on. And then we've got the um, plaque for the ship. Unfortunately, they've put the scale on um, and not even just put the scale on, they've put the word scale on as well. Um, I, I hate it when they do that. What we'll do is we'll just remove that. We'll chisel that off. Um, and we'll put um, a national flag or so something like that, one of the decals there, um, to make that look a bit more balanced, or we won't use it. Um, so there's no real detail on the other side, it's a single, single side mould, that one. Sprue F, uh, we've got the mast there, which, wow, has the yards already attached. Um, that looks like flagstaff, so the other things that we saw earlier weren't. Uh, we've got boat chocks, which actually are really detailed. Um, this looks like solid cranes. They don't look so hot. They've got some sink in them, um, and they're a bit featureless on the other sides. Yeah. Um, And we've got a large frame here, elevated frame for more ship's boats, which was not uncommon for that period. Um, and an anchor there. Continuing to see no ejector pins in the ship's boats. That's That's been really pleasing all the way through. Some really tiny parts. A lot of very finely moulded stanchions and that uh, that mast is crying out for someone to replace that in brass please because <laughs> it's very very fine it's not going to take much for those to break I mean, look at the look at the yards on them but a testament to the Toolmakers art there, I think. Very nice. Sprue G now. Um, and again, my part, this part has actually been damaged. Um, it's ever so slightly pushed in. Nothing I can't rectify. Very annoying though. Um, nice, a nice slide moulded part, however. There's some very nice detail there, a door with a window in, we've got a um, skylight on the top, that's very nice. Got a big vent there, um, got part of the propeller shaft assembly, some more vents, propeller shafts themselves. got some of the we've got uh, what looks like um, a stand for um, a crane now interestingly this was not foam wrapped but we've got another mast here with very very delicate yard arms already molded on the um, the screws are very thin. They actually look lovely. We'll need some very careful clean up on those. 
and then we've got another structure at the rear there which um, let's have a windows or vents at the sides different angles that looks really pretty looks like a ship's boats chuck at the on the top and then there's a little ship's boat so maybe that's the boat that goes on there uh, we've got looks like shutter doors or something on on there Got to say, this is one of the better moulded Trumpeter 1350 kits. I have a moustache and I have quite a few of them. So the last plastic sprue is the stand. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that we've got the this style and not that um, plastic strip with the lumps on. So I do prefer that. Um, and um, it, it, I think it's a better looking stand, but not only that, it gives us some options if we want to do our own um, plaque on the front. But yeah, next we have some copper chain. Um, Trumpeter tend to do it with elongated um, links, which I think looks better. Obviously it's not stud chain, um, but it, it does look so much better. Um, and because it's copper, it will respond um, well to a blackening process, chemical blackening process. First photo etched um, fret um, to come out. I've got some impact damage on mine, but thankfully seems to have missed the parts. So we can see we've got some big parts here which are actually to be put down for the um, little wing decks. Um, we've got what looks like the front part of the um, uh, main um, bridge and the railings attached some very fine um, railings some framework there that will get built up all very delicate some ladders they look like they might be rudders for the ship's boats yeah I'm not quite sure what that bit is but, uh, and then we've got some ladders going up to a platform So photo etch frame B, there's two of these, um, and we seem to have some very nice lattice um, work for um, ship's crane there, um, and the lifting hook. Some more railings, but there's not a lot of railings here, so I don't know if we're missing all the railings for the outside of the ship. Um, and some other sort of structure details, support brackets. Yeah, I don't think we've got ship's railings. That is weird. And the last item out of the box is the decals, um, which gives us a flag. So, as always, a bit underwhelming. Um, we've got the flag either in its square view or fluttering in the wind. Um, and then we've got what looks like the nameplate for the bow, and that's it. So there's no depth markers for the side of the hull. There's no marks for anything else. There's no signal flags. There's no um, Admiral on board flag. There's nothing. So as always with trumpeters, decals, completely underwhelmed. Um, but what we have got looks quite nicely printed. So let's take a look at this um, paint sheet next. So um, fairly standard trumpeter um, single piece um, painting sheet which means that um, in the instructions no doubt they won't have shouted out colours um, so the little um, tiny colour differences that you might get on, on things across the ship will be completely missed unfortunately that's what happens with this single sheet approach um, what you do have though is something that looks actually really quite regal with its green lower hull and gloss red boot stripe. So I think that looks really nice and it's one of the things that pulled me into this uh, model in the first place. 
Um, and then we've got grey upper hull superstructure and black mast tops. Uh, whether that's right that the black on the mast starts at different levels, we will need to check because I, I suspect that's probably not right, but I, I could be wrong. I'm no expert on this ship um, at all. I haven't done my research on it um, as yet either. Um, so we've got um, paint colours listed for Mr. Hobby, Akrisin, who I've never heard of in fairness, Vallejo, Master Model, Tamiya and Humbrol. Um, yeah, and then they seem to be saying for the hull you need to have a mix of green and green and black so they want oh okay so you need a darker green than they've called for okay the problem i have when they give you a percentage mix is that can't be the the percentage mix for all of these different brands of paint can't be absolutely can't be because those will all have a slightly different shade anyway so it's nonsense um so my recommendation, as always, with Trumpeter colour call-outs is do your research and, and decide which paints you're going to use and probably end up largely ignoring this. But, yeah, okay. Okay, so, instructions. Um, standard Trumpeter approach to the instructions, regardless of scale, they all pretty much look the same. You've got the scale, you've got the kit number, you've got a profile picture, and you've got what it is, just in case they've put the wrong instructions in the box. Um, then you've got a read before build section, which actually I always do because sometimes you come across some real, um, real gems. And the one in here is, in the recommended tools, is a soft cloth. What is the point of saying that? Nowhere in the instructions it's going to say, use a soft cloth to do this. So they've just listed the tools that you would need for, for building it, which, uh, you know, I understand that. But at the same time, what's the point of listing things that are a little bit random uh, if you're not going to explain what, you're going, what you need them for? Uh, don't see the point. Um, then there's some instructions there on uh, decal application, which is nice because a lot of manufacturers don't bother with, with going into the detail of that. Um, then we've got a little um, icon shout out uh, ready for the build instructions, um, all fairly fairly standard. Then we go to the first page, um, which is um, the shout out of all the parts, the parts list. Um, so we've been through all of these. Uh, and I know that I've got them all, so that's all good. There's nothing there highlighted that's not used in this kit either. So first step starts with the construction of the hull. Uh, I'm putting those braces in which have deck supports, which is nice. And actually seems to be slightly moulded to the shape of the hull as well. Then as we turn over, step two gets a little busier. Um, so we've got to put in the hull side guns, um, the deck, we've got construction of the huns, hull side guns there, got some drilling, it says make hole, doesn't tell you what size drill bit to use, so um, that's not really handy at all. Then we've got construction of the um, four propellers and two rudders, um, so yeah. Then, as we flip out, uh, as we'd sort of worked out on the way, um, we have all these booms here for the um, anti-torpedo nets. So you might be able to modify those, stick them out, and and put fabricate some netting, um, which would look super cool if we could do that. Um, then we've got some photo etch 
doors to go on the rear here. Um, okay. And then as we flip over and go to step four, we've got uh, another, uh, this will be the boom that swings out to allow ship's boats to dock. Um, and then we've got winches, vents, you've got all the um, gear required on the on the bow deck there for um, moving the anchors. Um, and the same there at the stern. So uh, the build sequence is logical. Um, so far this is pretty much how I would approach it. I wouldn't be changing any of this. Um, and it's nice to see that they've not got you building hundreds of sub-assemblies that you're not going to use for a period of time. So I like that. We've got a couple of little blown up areas here. So that's not something I remember seeing before. So just showing you which parts going on there. Um, I missed, I don't I didn't don't think I mentioned it, but on the previous step we've put the photo etched um, wind X on. And then as we go to step five, um, we're putting anchor chains on, anchors, got assembly of the anchors there saying make three of that type and clearly make one of that which must be the stern anchor well no no there's a lot of anchors one two three four five anchors uh, and then we've got the deck guns out i wouldn't put the deck guns on at that stage because you've got to put all this stuff in the middle and you're reaching over the deck guns that's how they get broken um so i'd be leaving those until that centre section was built up a little bit, I think. Um, but that's the first time we got to step five before I've said, no, I wouldn't do it that way. So that's all good. So step six, I will break this down. Um, that those of you that have watched my videos for a while now will know that I'll break these down into individual steps, which will uh, make it easier to identify at what point we need to put aftermarket action and parts on so they have this as one step um, and I'm seeing one two three five I'm seeing 15 steps here um, so we're building up uh, what looks like the forward bridge it's all making logical sense lower structure detail on the lower structure next level up uh, then we've got these little wing parts, so some of the little um, structures that go on the side there, more vents. Lots of vents on this, which will make it look really interesting um, when done. Then we've got some etch um, and this um, cylindrical part, so I'm not quite sure what that's for, seems to be it might be the base of the, the mast, maybe. Um, and we've got another um, deck that sits on top of that frame. Photo etched ladders, photo etched railings. It's really strange they've put railings on the superstructure and not on the side of the ship. Really, really strange. Um, and then we've got some photo etched that we've got to fold to create these sort of booms, I'm guessing they swing out or something, I'm not sure, intriguing, we will have to read around, then step seven continues the structure of that with some small parts, then we've got this open bridge area that we saw on the photo etch sheet uh, with some quite complex folding to get around all that structure. Um, and then we put, oh, it's not open bridge, there's a little plastic roof that goes on top. That's quite nice. That they've, Yeah, I like that. I do like that. Um, and then we've got a photo etch section that goes down at the back. Which, yeah, that's interesting. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. So this is going to be quite an interesting looking ship when done. Um, so that's clearly the uh, searchlight platform there. 
got a rangefinder going on. Uh, search lights which we saw and were really exquisitely moulded three pieces and then more railings then we're fitting the well we're fitting that structure we've just built the forward superstructure is going in then we've got the base for the the funnels which needs quite a lot of uh, vents going on 28 of them um, some more holes to make again no idea what size we've got a little bit of superstructure that goes in there and then we've got the rear superstructure with all the vents going on there and then we'll flip over we're at step nine now so we've got quite a complex um, ladder assembly. So we saw this in the etch, got a, a, two ladders and a platform in the middle. Um, so we're folding those up and then putting a, a side railing on um, so that we've got ladders going up from the deck, up several decks of the superstructure. Step 10, we're building up um, another searchlight platform um, again we've got a photo etch frame as the basis for this so they've captured a lot of the uh, delicate structure in photo etch which is nice um, and railings and the, you know there's there's towers on here this is all going to look really authentic when done I think trumpeter have done a good job of that process and that goes in between the two um, funnels there and adding that before the funnels makes complete sense so yeah all good step 12 so that's the really nicely molded um, raised ship boats framework that we saw um, so that's they, they looked really delicate, so they're going to look really nice once in place. And then there's cross members that go on top of that. So you're going to have quite a nice little uh, framework there that we can see here. And that, that then has some photo etch go on to complete the look. So that the top plates are photo etch. Yeah, that'll look really nice. Fifteen, so that's my part that came came off. If you remember, and we had a little um, rectangle. I said, I wonder what that is. What well, it's just a location point, um, and we can see that armored spotting top and and uh, directional um, control tower goes on top. Um, so that's just behind the main armament there. So it's clearly gunnery control. Then we've got all these lovely vents and uh, you know when you put vents like this period this style of vents on turn of the century style vents it really does make the ship look really pretty um, much more so than second world war warships i think um, we've got some photo etch parts going on to um, this here which is going in between the ship's boats that little boat that we saw going on there and then we've got funnel construction so two halves that's a solid piece of plastic so it's sort of like a blanking plate I wonder if it only really had one funnel that's interesting um, so there's a yeah because you've got um, you've only got the etch going on one of them I think is that right? Yeah. Oh no. No, we seem to have some blanking piece in there and then you've got the um, funnel cap etch going on top of the funnel cap ring. Um, so it's really strange that we've got this blanking cap in there. Where's all that beautiful black smoke going to come from? Yeah, interesting. Um, I've not seen that before in a funnel. 
so then we're placing the funnels. Um, we've got um, ducting work that goes around the funnels. Then we've got more ship's boat mounting points. Now, absolutely agree with the um, sequence there. Funnels in, ducting work in. We've finished with the central area, so we move out. But that's why I wouldn't have put the deck guns in yet. Because you've got to work between the superstructure and the deck gun to put that in. So I always work from the middle, up and out. Um, but trumpeter aren't far off my building process. So they've massively improved the thought process behind the build sequence. So really nice to see that, actually. Um, then we've got the framework going on top of there. Building up the ship's boats, always the time-consuming part of the, of the ship build. Um, and we saw these, and they did look really nice, actually. There's plenty of detail on the, on the um, powered Admiral's boat, if you like. Um, no issues with, um, with ejector pin marks or anything, so they'll all look good under paint. Um, then we're placing the ship's boats. Step 24, construction of the masts. That worries me a little bit, given how delicate the masts are that we've got photo edge tops to go on. Um, and we've got spotting deck there that's, that's also photo etch. And then we've got um, yards to go on as well. But they look the part when built up. They really do look the part. Very nice. Main guns, so uh, triple turrets. And we saw those, they looked exquisite. So um, they build up, the guns will be you'll be able to position. Then we've got uh, those, what, look, what I thought looked like gun bases are the crane bases. So uh, we've got a combination of plastic parts and quite a bit of photo etch there to build up the ship's crane. Um, if you remember the plastic part there, this, this bit here, um, I, I felt didn't look quite right. It looked a bit plain. So we're making two of those, um, must be slightly different handing. Interesting, it's got a searchlight mounted on the side of it. I've not seen that before on a crane. Then we have placing of the cranes and the main guns. So that's step 29. And Step 30, that's putting davits on. I'm glad to see that they haven't put the flagstaffs on at the start of the build, which they always used to do. That makes much more sense to do it at the, at the back end. Uh, we've got some cage, some contraption going on the, the rear there. Not quite sure what that is. Um, so, yeah different davits and bits and pieces going on last which all makes sense and then we're dangling even more ships boats off them so that looked really pretty when displayed with the all these boats hanging off it yeah very nice so that's step 31 so we have 32 steps in total the last one being make up the base and put it on most likely going to build the base much sooner than that because it gives you something to rest the hull on while you while you're building it really 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 strange that they have not put railings in trumpeter have always put railings in for the side they have um, a fret of generic um, railings i've got a number of them in my stash because they tend to always get replaced by the aftermarket so why they've not done that i don't know that is really odd. Anyway, there you have it. That is one of the nicest looking Trumpeter 1350 scale kits I've ever seen. Um, it's 
the, the instruction manual makes much more sense and uh, the kit parts look really nicely done. A lot of delicate stuff there, so a, a very careful build. Um, you're not going to be able to slap this together. Okay, so my first impressions. Um, you get a box that's absolutely rammed full of plastic. Um, I've not done any research, so how accurate this is, I have no idea. Um, what I like about it is there is a lot of finely done parts which is going to add to the finished look of this. And when you look at it, you've got the ship's boats hanging off, you've got the netting all rolled up along the side which we can scratch emulate or we could possibly modify these booms and swing them out have it at anchor uh, and put some netting across um, there's a lot of very delicate framework on that on this which makes this a very pretty ship and trumpeter have done a really good job of capturing all of that so putting aside the fact that we don't know how accurate it it is and the fact that we'll have to do some research on um, colors and so on and so forth um, I like that we've got um, an Austrian ship something a bit different um, I think it's a very pretty subject with its ram bow and what have you I think it'll be a very nice display piece I think straight out of the box uh, you can build something up that looks really nice although you're gonna have to source some railings it clearly had railings, the box artwork shows it had railings. Very strange they've not included the railings. So uh, I think on the positive side there's some really nice moulding, some of the best moulding I've seen from Trumpeter. Um, the, they have uh, a set of instructions that make much more sense than previous instructions um, from the earlier kits up to fairly recently have made. Um, so yeah very very good however um, we don't stop there because not long after this came out Edward brought out some etch um, so let's have a look at that so um, master who usually do the the turned brass barrels have done a set of masts for this model but not the trumpeter version um, the Combrig resin version. So what they've done is they have cut to length all the brass bits that you need for building the, the two masts and the jack staffs and one or two other bits as well and they've given you turned brass yards as well. And fortunately what these are are direct replacements for parts called out in the Combrig instructions um, and the Combrig instructions will um, tell you to cut bits of wire to length so it's already pre-done for you um, and you can get the Combrig instructions online so we can use these to replace um, plastic kit parts at our leisure um, so I think that's going to be really helpful. Um, so yeah, really nice. So Edward do three sets of photo etch um, for this particular ship. Um, this first one here deals primarily with um, ships, boats and gives us the um, deck railings that were missing from the kit. Um, so we've got here um, improved um, wing decks which have um, a nice sort of textured steel edge. Um, we've got the uh, rope ladders to hang off the booms and then we've got things like the deck planking for inside of the ship's boats. That propellers for the ship's boats, um, that's for the the, um, the power boat, not quite sure what that is. Um, and then we've got boat inners, rudders, 
life rings, lots and lots of ores. So we have a quick look at the instructions. We can see we've got parts for, da uh, for the davits, for the jack staffs, the missing railings. Uh, we've got the wing decks there, plus some items that go on that. Um, you need a little bit of scratch, um, scratch build in there. Rope ladders on the booms. And then it's all um, making modifications to the ship's boats. So the second set of um, Edward um, Etch um, is another large sheet. Um, this one dealing with a lot of small detail. So basically the superstructure. Um, and this one's the detail set. So they're described as a detail set and a railing set. So here we can see um, um, replacements for the um, chocks for the for the ships. Um, we can see um, replacement railings. We can see um, hand rungs for the um, funnels. Various little parts to go on, um, I think they've gone on the deck, um, life preservers, quite a lot of um, ladder rungs um, and new railings, bits to go on the masts, we've got bits there that are good to go on the um, armament I can see, bits to go on the guns, um, Parts for the cranes, not quite sure what that is. Lots and lots of tiny detail parts, many of them repetitive parts. We've got some upgrade parts for the, uh, for the cranes here as well. So lots and lots of tiny details. Um, and that looks like replacement for that bridge but we'll have a look at the instructions and see exactly what that is. So the instructions for this comes across three sheets that's how comprehensive it is. So we have, uh, do you remember I said that the guns looked a little bit simple um, so we've got all sorts of bits here we've got um, what you'd expect is that the hand wheels um, but we've got all sorts of little details to go on there to bring that to life. Um, we've got mounting points to go on the hull for all of those um, booms for the torpedo nets. Then we've got yeah replacement etch for the for the kit etch here. Um, replacement skylight, so that's nice. We've got some uh, railings around the, some of the walkways, additional railing, um, life preservers and the holders for them. And then we've got something to cut bits off the PE parts here. So that, that's a replacement for the kit etch anyway. Yeah, all sorts of little bits there. And then we've got covers for the vents, which are nice. Ah, that's a, for the rear structure there. That's that's a new rear structure with different ventilation layout, so that improves that look. Um, we've got an etch replacement for this piece of superstructure here. And we've got Edward etch that attaches to the kit parts. Uh, which is kit etch, so that's interesting. Additional items to the already very nice um, searchlights. Some of these parts are replacing kit etch here. Some of them are in addition, so there's quite a bit around the crane there. 
So that's the first sheet. Second sheet. So that's a slightly different presentation of the um, platform that goes between the funnels. We've got some replacement hatches for the deck and some additional items for the anchors, pulleys and bits and pieces. Quite a lot of um, interest going on the outside of the hull with this kit if you're using this etch. So all those little parts we saw, these rows and rows of things appear to be some form of winches, maybe they're winches for the for these guns are they? Yeah, maybe. Certainly gonna be a very busy looking deck with all of this on. Then we've got the same for the bow. Not, it must be winches for the um, torpedo net. Lots and lots of stuff going on the outer hull here. It's going to be a very busy looking um, ship when done. Uh, then we have a replacement for that um, boom there and more rope wheels and a ladder. And we've got quite a complex assembly for around the funnels. And a reworking of the funnel caps. Then we have additional details for the main guns. So it's not suggesting these are replacing anything on the guns, we're just adding this on. And it gives you an overall position, so that there's obviously differences between the four gun turrets. And then we have some additional bits for the masts. So this is adding to the kit masts, um, but we need to talk about masts because there is a different option for masts um, using a master upgrade set, which we'll look at in a, in a sec. So that's a really comprehensive set from Edward, um, and I always look at etchers options to improve. So you can use some of this, you can use all of it. Um, I would say the kit would probably build up quite nicely without this, but you, I would definitely buy into the railing set just because it's going to look odd without the railings at this scale. Right. And there is one other final etch set from Edward that we need to have a quick look at. So the third and final Edward etch set is a set of their colour etched flags. So that gives us the one flag that comes with the kit as a replacement and then gives us some additional flags. Now there is no instructions with this set so I have no idea if some of these are signal flags um, or some of these are to say that there's an admiral on board or something like that. So some research is needed around the flags to, to actually be able to use them. A bit disappointing that there isn't a, um, an instruction sheet that says where to put them, uh, which masts would have them. Um, but yeah, I would imagine that's for the front um, jack staff and that's for the rear one. And the rest will go on the signal flags on the mast I would guess but um, some research is needed. Nevertheless um, the flags are most welcome uh, and look really good. So there you have it that's Trumpeter's um, Veribus Unitis I think that's how we pronounce it. Um, it's an Austro-Hungarian um, warship. Um, I think the kit is one of the nicer kits that Trumpeter have done. Um, I think the subject matter is very interesting when you when you look at the actual ship it's very intricate um, and um, quite a busy ship uh, if you take the Edward etch and raise it up um, a level or two then you're going to have something that's going to look uh, very very um, beautiful I think um, lots and lots of detail um, it's going to have very busy decks quite busy hull so yeah um, really um, interesting um, to see how this builds together to be honest so that's it it's a really nice um, kit I'm, 
I would at this stage from what I've seen I'd certainly recommend it if you're interested um, obviously we've not built it so but it's trumpeted so I don't expect any major issues with with the fit to be honest so um, that's it thanks for looking in stay safe everyone and I hope to see you all soon